all of our brains think emotionally before they think intellectually, right? Every single one of our brains thinks emotionally first. And there's a little part of our brain called the amygdala, uh, which is Latin for almond. And it's about the size of an almond. Therefore, you might understand the connection. And it's a little tiny part of our brain. And it's, a, it's one of the most important parts when it comes to thinking critically. The amygdala is a switch. And it effectively is a switch that decides which part of our brain gets activated. And you can either act, turn on and activate the rear part of our brain, which is the primal part, which is about survival and fast thought, okay, and instinctive thinking, or it can switch on the front part of our brain, which is the part that's for advanced critical thinking, intellectual ideas, careful thoughtfulness, and so forth. Problem is, if the amygdala gets scared, if it feels that the body's under threat in any way, if we're under any danger, it switches on the back part of our brain, which is turns on our fight or flight recess so that we have access to you know, making a quick decision and surviving. Okay. Not great for intellectual thought though. But the amygdala hasn't evolved enough and it doesn't understand that non-physical threats aren't really threats to us. So it takes things that are stressful or challenging or different and it also interprets them as threats to our survival. Whereas what it's really designed for is physical threats to our so actual immediate threats to our well-being, physical well-being. It just doesn't know the difference. It hasn't evolved enough to know that. And this is why students might freak out when they have a test and they get all stressed out about a test. And then they get into the test and they forget about what they studied because the amygdala literally shut off the thinking part of their brain and turned on the survival part of the brain because it felt so threatened by the stress of the test. The test is no real threat to the survival of the body, but the amygdala doesn't get that. It doesn't understand the distinctions, unfortunately. Huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had that threat in my mind many a times, actually, when I was going to school. So, yeah, the test results did not end up very well. But uh, now I can, I know my, how my brain works, so I can do way better. So that's, that's part of the evolution. So Right. All, all students have and all people have. And if you've ever been... You say, well, I'm so upset that I can't think straight, right? That's because you're so upset that you can't think straight. Your amygdala has turned off your thinking brain because it's so threatened and it's turned on your survival brain that, yes, you literally could not think straight because the thinking part of your brain was shut off. How do we change that? We give a lot of different techniques for approaching that. But here's one way that you can think about it. Very interesting studies have been done on this that have found that um, if we take a situation that where it's found as being a threat to us, stress that's a threat, and we try to reframe that stress as a challenge, that it actually calms down the amygdala and lets us think better. It's the same stress, one way, it's the same input, one way or another, that's coming into us, the same stimulus that we're facing. And it can be stressful in both regards, right? It can, so the test can be stressful one way or the other. The argument that we're in can be stressful one way or the other. The job interview can be stressful one way or the other. If we can take it and say, okay, this is a threat, how can we think of it as a challenge? What works in terms of thinking of it as a challenge is to start enumerating for ourselves those mechanisms and those resources that we have within ourselves or available to us that help us overcome the stressor. And if we start to, and it's best actually done if it's out loud or in writing, but we can do it in our heads as well. If we start to actually make an enumeration of what are my resources for why I can overcome this stressor, right? I can best the situation. Then that actually is shown to start to calm the amygdala down and it turn back, turns on the thinking part of the brain again.